JBN, we keep you informed. SOE detainee shot dead after escaping custody and allegedly attacking cop. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is probing last week's fatal shooting of a prisoner from a detention center in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. The deceased has been identified as O'Neill Anthony Gill, otherwise called Tallman and Portmore, who is of Gregory Park, St. Catherine address. According to reports, on Thursday, Gill was among 21 persons who were detained in an early morning operation in Christian Penn under the state of emergency in the parish. Further reports are that about 2.30 p.m., while the detainees were being processed, the police academy at Twittenham Park, Gill, asked to use the bathroom. He reportedly later locked himself inside the facility and was then seen escaping through a window in the bathroom. An alarm was raised and police personnel went in pursuit of the escapee. Gill was accosted in bushes near the police academy, where he reportedly resisted those in pursuit and attacked one of the lawmen. He was then shot by the police. Gill was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigators said prior to his detention, Gill was on the run for some time after having absconded bail on charges relating to the shooting of a police officer. Man murdered at garage in Brayton, Portmore. A man was murdered in broad daylight in Brayton, Portmore, St. Catherine on Thursday. The victim has been identified as 37-year-old laborer Beris Flynn, otherwise called Bath, of Reedspen in Brayton. The killing took place at a garage on the old Brayton Road. The St. Catherine Salt Police reported that minutes before noon, Flynn and other men were at the garage when three men drove up to the location. Two of the men came out of the vehicle and attacked Flynn with guns, shooting him several times in the process. Flynn was pronounced dead upon arrival at hospital, where he was transported by police personnel who were summoned to the crime scene. Since September 5, a state of emergency has been in effect in the parishes of St. Catherine and Clarendon. St. James Man listed as person of interest in police shooting. Detectives assigned to the Montego Bay Criminal Investigation Branch in the St. James Division have listed 24-year-old Travis Malcolm as a person of interest in relating to the shooting of a police officer. Malcolm, otherwise called Tipa, is said to be of Port Bello, Montego Bay, St. James. He's been asked to turn himself into the Montego Bay Police by midday today. Additionally, anyone who may be able to help the police to locate him is being asked to contact the investigators at 876-979-845223, Crime Stop at 311, Police 119 Emergency Number or the nearest police station. Airport worker turns himself in after cops make $13 million drug find. A ramp cart operator of Norwood St. James who has been sought by the police in connection with the seizure of some $13 million worth of cocaine at the Sanks International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James on Wednesday has turned himself over to the law. Detectives on the case had given Abriana Reed up to 6 p.m. on Thursday, September 19 to report to the Summit Police Station in the parish. Reed turned himself in in the presence of his attorney on Friday. The investigators said it is believed that Reed can help them with the probe into the drug seizure. This was after officers from the Narcotics Division bagged the cocaine weighing approximately 22 pounds at the airport during routine checks. Reports are that about 1.30 p.m., law enforcers were conducting checks on an outgoing flight destined for Philadelphia, USA. During the operation, a toolbox was searched and two bags with a total of 10 packages, each containing substance resembling cocaine, were found. 93-year-old woman dies in Manchester fire. A senior citizen has perished in a house fire in the rural community of Mayfield in Manchester. The deceased woman has been identified as 93-year-old Alicia Spencer of Mayfield. According to reports, sometime after 2 p.m., residents saw smoke coming from the elderly woman's home and contacted the fire department. During cooling down operations, Spencer's child remains were found. She was reportedly alone at the time of the blaze. The Manchester police and members of the fire department are continuing their investigations to determine the cause of the fire. Dogs suspected of attacking teacher removed from owner. The police are reporting that the dogs believed to have attacked a primary school teacher 
in Cooper Zeal St. Andrew on Thursday have been taken from their owner. The Constabulary's Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, said the dogs were removed on Saturday with the assistance of the Jamaica Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Reports are that on Thursday evening, the St. Richard's Primary School teacher was doing a routine w evening walk along Woodland Way in Cooper's Hill, St. Andrew, when four pit bulls attacked her, causing extensive damage to her limbs and head. The woman was rescued and taken to the hospital by the police, where she remains in serious condition. The police said investigations continue. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, Owen Speed, has since expressed deep regret at what he called the lack of public safety from aggressive dogs. Phillips vows to continue tackling corruption and transform the education sector. President of the People's National Party, PMP, Dr. Peter Phillips, says the opposition will not let up on the issue of corruption. Speaking at the PMP's 81st annual conference yesterday at the National Arena in Kingston, Dr. Phillips said the opposition expects that arrests will emanate from the various corruption scandals which have rocked the Jamaica Labour Party government of the last couple of years. Meanwhile, he emphasized that transformation of the education system will be the main priority of the next PMP administration. Dr. Phillips reaffirmed the party's commitment to expanding opportunities in tertiary education and ensuring that the first child in every family that qualifies for university is awarded a full scholarship. He promised that the PMP will also transform the quality of education in underperforming schools. The opposition leader also vowed that his party will pass a paternity leave law in an effort to improve family life. St. James SOE not indefinite, says Chang. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang says the state of public emergency SOE in St. James will not be indefinite. The primary purpose of the SOE is to reduce crime and violence, particularly murders. The SOE is, however, not something you can maintain forever in a community, and in fact, the shorter time you have it, the better off the public are, he stated. The minister was responding to concerns raised by entertainment industry stakeholders in the parish regarding what they said was the SOE's impact on their engagements during a meeting at Prayer One in Montego Bay on Saturday. Chang cited the Suppression of Crime Act, extensive utilization of which, he argued, not only became negative, it changed the habit of the law enforcement officers. We don't want to do that at this point. We have come a long way, he further contended. The minister said the SOE has nonetheless proved effective in breaking the murder cycle wherever it has been implemented, in addition to reducing violence while engendering more effective policing. Chang indicated that this has been supported by other initiatives, such as job creation for young people, which he emphasized remains a major focus of the government. Meanwhile, the minister underscored the need for a legitimate framework for entertainment so that patrons can conduct themselves appropriately without getting into violent activities. We need the opportunity for young people to get into other kinds of activity as well and we need to get the communities organized under the SOE, he further stated. Chang also encouraged event promoters across St. James to form a unified body that will have a greater voice as well as help to better streamline the applications for permits to stage engagements. Police get 80 new motorbikes. The Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, got a big boost on Saturday with the handing over of 80 motorcycles at the Police Commissioner's Office in Kingston. An elated Security Minister Horace Chang said that the occasion symbolized the re-establishment of the JCF as a modern fit-for-purpose force. He said that for too long there has been little investment in the JCF and much of the officers' working conditions, equipment and vehicles that have deteriorated over time and no longer gives officers the support they need in order to efficiently carry out their duties ends the need for rehabilitation. We have taken a systematic and pragmatic approach to re-equipping and restructuring the constabulary force. The expectation is that within the next two years, we would have concluded the rehabilitation of all 186 police stations, built additional stations, and would have provided the police with a quality, reliable fleet of vehicles with which to carry out their duties. An added dimension to this process is the development of a fleet management system that will provide greater transparency in the procurement and maintenance 
of the motor vehicles and motorbikes being utilized by the Jamaica Constabulary Force. This is part of the government's thrust to not only equip the officers, but to implement systems that are sustainable, that enforce accountability, and that are in the best interest of Jamaica for generations to come, Chang said. At the same time, he announced that the traffic management system is being revamped in order to be more effective. For many years and over multiple administrations, we have witnessed a gradual decline in the effectiveness of the system. Needless to say, motorists are aware of the system's inefficiencies, and in many cases they take advantage of the system and display a nonchalant attitude towards traffic violations. The revamped traffic ticket management system is a centralized web-based system that will improve the management of traffic tickets throughout the various stages, application of payments, demerit points, court fines, issuing of warrants, etc. The system will reflect in real time from the point the ticket is issued to an offender to when it is either being paid at the tax office or adjudicated in court, he said. According to the minister, technical teams were ironing out the final details of the system to ensure that when it goes live, it would have addressed all the possible issues that could prevent it from functioning properly. Additionally, he stated that one aspect of the traffic ticket management system that the public should begin interfacing with in the coming weeks is the issuance of electronic warrants, also referred to as e-warrants. This is a value added of the new traffic ticket management system. It allows officers of the Public Safety and the Traffic Enforcement Branch to access real-time reports that detail information on all the warrants that have been issued for an individual and flags the warrant that remain outstanding for that individual at any point in time, Chang said. This, he said, will allow the police to be in a better position to target and address repeat offenders who have been able to avoid detection and apprehension under the previous system. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.